In this video, we're gonna go ahead and review the Find Me technique for integration. The Find Me technique is starting to become really popular when it comes to solving some integral problems, especially definite integrals, because that's really the only way that you can solve them. This is Richard Feynman, who made the technique quite popular when you started differentiating underneath the integral sign. I wrote about this in my book of integrals. A lot of people are gonna say that Leibniz was the one who actually started this, and technically it is true since it is sort of his theorem, but we don't wanna talk about that. I think Richard Feynman deserves to make this popular. So how does the Feynman technique actually work? The idea is that you're going to create a function f alpha, where alpha is going to be somewhere inside your domain for the original function g of x. Now, g of x is typically a uh, definite integral, but we'll talk about that later on. The idea is that you want to set some condition f of a, and you want to find f of b, and f of b is basically the integral that we're trying to find. Again, I'll talk about that later. And at the end, what we really are trying to find is the definite integral from a to b of f prime of alpha. This is the partial derivative that we begin talking about and what Richard Feynman made quite famous. We're going to review this technique with an integral that I think it's one of the most basic for where you can actually use the Feynman technique. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we go. We have an integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 1 over natural log of x. A lot of people already know what the answer of this is going to be. Um, I believe it's in a lot of MIT integration bees. But here is the concept. If you try to use u substitution or any other technique, you notice that it's not going to really work. So using the Feynman technique, we're gonna go ahead and create an equation f of alpha, which is gonna change something in the function. This alpha is gonna be somewhere in our input or it's just gonna change the function a little bit. And here's what I mean. This is gonna become the integral from zero to one of x to the power of alpha minus one over natural log of x dx okay and the reason why we're doing this is because when we create our condition it actually cancels out the integral which is really nice so the condition that we want is f of zero think about it if you insert zero into your alpha x to the power of zero is one one minus one is zero so you have the integral of zero which is just zero and typically that's what we want if we don't if we don't get zero we probably want infinity or something like that but at the very end, what we want to find is f of 2. Why f of 2? Because when you put 2 in for your alpha, you basically have the original integral that we have. So that is what we're tr actually trying to find. So at the very end, what we want to find is the integral from 0 to 2 of f prime of alpha with respect to alpha. And again, we're going to talk about that in a bit. But before we even do that, now that we introduce this function right here, we need to go ahead and take the derivative of this function with respect to alpha. What that means is that on the left-hand side, we're definitely just going to have f prime of alpha. But on the right-hand side, you're actually taking the partial derivative. Whoops, I should probably put this a little better. Partial derivative with respect to alpha from 0 to 1 of x to the power of alpha minus 1 over natural log of x. Okay, so how is this going to work? Um, there's some uh, theorems. I, I forgot what the theorem is called. If anyone is watching, they could definitely state this theorem, but we can it, definitely switch this. I think Maths 505 talks about this a lot, and he talks about how you have a bounded function uh, within a bounded uh, integral or a bounded parameter, so we can switch these around. But typically, we can just move the partial derivative and take the partial derivative of this function right here. So how would that look? We have f prime of alpha equals the integral from 0 to 1 of the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x to the power of alpha minus 1 over natural log of x. Okay, I'm just going to put some brackets here just so we can kind of look at what we're doing. We're taking the partial derivative of this function right here. And now, remember, because we're taking the partial derivative with respect to alpha, we're really just treating x like a constant. So natural log of x, in this case, just doesn't matter to this derivative because we're taking the derivative with respect to alpha. So to the alpha, the x is just a constant. So what we really have is all we have to do is take the derivative of the top, and this is just a constant. It's just going to stay there. Now, how is that going to look? Partial derivatives take some time to kind of understand, and it just, you know, it takes some time to wrap our heads around this because of the variable x. But let me just give you an example. If I'm taking the part or the derivative of a to the power of u, where u is the variable that we're differentiating against, this is going to become natural log of a, a of u. This is something that we all learn in basic calc 1. That is exactly what we're going to be doing here x in this case is your constant. So what we're going to end up getting is we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of this um, derivative right here, which is going to give us natural log of x 
x to the power of alpha, and then the derivative of one is just zero, that goes away all over the constant that again, alpha didn't really care about. So now we have the natural log of x with respect to x. This is really nice. And that's the whole point of the Feynman technique is that it cancels something out that was otherwise pretty annoying in the very beginning of our integral. So now this goes away. So what we end up having, if we have f prime of alpha is equal to the integral from zero to one of x to the alpha dx. And now we're left with a nice integral that we can easily solve using the power rule. Okay, so as we're taking the integral from zero to one of this function here with respect to x, now we're actually treating alpha as a constant because now we're differentiating, or I'm sorry, integrating with respect to x. So what we end up having is f prime of alpha is gonna equal to, we're just gonna use a simple power rule where we do x to the alpha plus one over alpha plus one from zero to one. And now we can go ahead and just implement the first fundamental theorem of calculus that tells us that f prime of alpha is now gonna equal to, just plug in one for the x, we have one over alpha plus one minus, and then you have a, you plug in zero in for the x, and that just goes away. So we really just have f prime of alpha is equal to one over alpha plus one. Okay, think about what we did. We took the derivative with respect to alpha, and then we integrated with respect to x, and now we really just have a function with alpha as our input. So now we can go ahead and start taking the integral of f prime of alpha. But remember, this is where we start finding our goal. This is what we want. We want the integral from zero to two of f prime of alpha because this is equal to f of two minus f of zero, okay? So what we have is we have the integral from zero to two of f prime of alpha d alpha is equal to integral from zero to two of one over alpha plus one d alpha. Okay, on the left-hand side, we already said by first one fundamental theorem of calculus, this is f of two minus f of zero, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. This over here becomes natural log absolute value of alpha plus one from zero to two. Okay, on this side, this is why we have this condition. This is what we wanna find, f of two, because remember, if f of two, it just becomes the original function here. So that's what we're trying to find. Minus f of zero, which we already found was zero. So we have f of two minus zero, which is just that, equals, and now we just go ahead and implement the first fundamental theorem of calculus on here. We plug in two, we have natural log of three minus natural log of one, which is just zero. So f of two is equal to three. And once again, what we found, have found that f of two is equivalent to the integral from zero to one of x squared minus one over natural log of x dx, and that's gonna equal to the natural log of three. And that is the Feynman technique. That is exactly how we can rearrange this function with some uh, value alpha, take the derivative, take the integral again, and then take the integral one last time to find our exact solution. Now, obviously this is easier said than done because there are so many problems that can involve the Feynman technique that can become quite difficult. However, it's still a lot easier than actually finding the original integral. So hopefully you found this a little informative. Please make sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and if TikTok is still around, you can follow me on there, and I'll see you in the next one.